What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time, we are here with Vog of the Almighty Decapitated. Thank you so much for being here today, man. It's great to have you here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Alex. Thanks for that amazing introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to be back for the interviews. And, you know, it's I'm glad. I'm glad that people are interesting about the band what's going on and uh, about our new releases and plans and stuff like that so hell yeah let's go I'm, I'm excited because we got the first damned the early demos of decapitated uh coming out very soon what i really want to know is is that being that these are like the early demos you know people never really hear these sides of you is this like you know it's showing the rawest sides and you know showing the younger days of decapitated and everything like that so is this going to be somewhat like it was winds of creation kind of meant to do that is it going to be almost kind of like a throwback to the winds of creation debut album or is this even way more like raw and way more uh uh you know n older if you will add yeah so important thing in here is that those two two demo tapes that we're going to release all together right now in this week actually um uh, they include that almost all songs from our debut album winds of creation and for all fans that know our first album uh winds of creation that will be something really cool i guess really surprising because we're going a little bit more for the past because winds of creation uh been released in 2000 and the things we're talking about right now first then being recorded and actually not released because we cannot talk about releasing because it's all it was all underground tape trading stuff like that but it was a little bit before in 97 and 1998 so that's a really long time ago like no spotify no apple music no things like that no internet really old school times um so it's gonna be interesting thing for the for the decapitated fans they didn't know how we start didn't know how we sound on the beginning and we didn't do any mastering of that we didn't do any mix so it it's all it's all sounding exactly the same like we recorded when we've been young when we've been 15 years old and this is this is uh how th this is something representing our really really beginnings do you think and maybe i'm asking this a little prematurely and if you of course if you're allowed to say but like is this also meant to kind of like hold the listener over while we maybe wait for the follow-up to anti-cult in a way like uh is this kind of like uh maybe a good way to maybe hold people over while we wait for a new uh decapitated album well well why yeah we can we can we can see from this perspective on on this release why not i mean we have weird we we have a weird weird times right now COVID, no shows and stuff like that so i think it's a good occasion right now to release something you know and and just um don't don't uh, let people wait too long uh for new material without anything between talking about new album uh i can just you know do a like quick uh uh newsletting about what's going on that new album we, will be released on the beginning of the next year we we probably we, we're gonna release also the few uh singles in this year after summer um so yeah but come back for the for the for the previous question for the first damn release it's something like it's a good time for doing that right now and it's something that uh, for the new fans of dick cup it it's gonna be interesting thing because uh maybe they they know our sound from anti called blood but from blood mantra or from newest records and and 
they will have occasion right now to to check us from the first uh, first lineup for the beginning from the beginnings of this band for the um, road sounding demo tapes and I think it's really interesting thing and it's a, a few good reasons to release it right now after more than 20 years yeah it's very uh, sentimental trip for to the past to the history of, of, of our band well, and what's interesting is, is too, is like, I feel like there's a good way to demonstrate evolution because I've always said that Decapitated had a great evolution in their sound because, you know, I feel like while you guys are undoubtedly a death metal band, I feel like you bring in aspects of, you know, classic albums from, you know, The Sound of Perseverance by Death to Slaughter of the Soul by At the Gates to Tomb of the Mutilated by Cannibal Corpse. You have kind of like a, you, you're a death metal awesome. smorgasbord, as I like to say. And like, from, that's awesome to hear. <laughs> but like, to, it, it, it was a great, one of the great, uh, the shortest and the greatest review of, of our transformation it's amazing oh. yeah that, that's that's sick that's cool they, I, lo I love it they, but like you know when you compare like winds of creation to an album like the negation like you know from listening to that i never would have thought that i would hear like a melodic intro on a song like moth defect off of blood mantra you know what i mean so is it fair right. to say that like maybe you use your instrumentation and you almost use your uh sound to almost like demonstrate an emotion or a certain feeling that you have at that particular time. It almost seems like your guitar is like an emotional extension of yourself. Oh yeah, definitely. That that's perfect description of, of what is going on here in this band. Um, and we we have to remember that that decapitated have you know almost twenty five years right now. I mean exactly twenty five years now. So. It's a long time, uh, and it was a time for make this evolution from a really death metal, melodic, technical, brutal death metal in the beginning to now with all those changes with, you know, I don't know even how to explain, but the evolution was huge. Uh, coming, you know, talking about last album, Anticode, like, or, or uh, blood mantra album like it it both both albums got this even stoner music uh, groove together with death metal of course but it would be surprising uh talking about the new album it would be surprising because the evolution is still going there and and uh, but i have a feeling that we we did this turn to the past with the you know it, our sound became more brutal again and people can expect come back for this aggression we have on the first two albums or even on organic hallucinosis uh there will be more for sure more uh, emotional melodies and really sharp killer riffing to mix with blast beats and uh, double kicks parts and stuff like that so it looks like we're coming back for the for the for the aggression we have on the on the beginning of the band on the beginning of century wow. it would be really technical would be really lots of blast beats material but still lots of emotion and we, all last four years are there if you know what i mean like all the emotion all the situation we've been in through uh, all the hard times we we getting into will be there and will be just spread into the into the microphones into the tubes and amps and stuff like that so yeah uh, do you does that inspirations like strike when you least expect it like do you just like have this in, like just do ideas just come out of the blue for you or do you almost have like a usual go-to realm where you can kind of like come up with ideas you know isolation is a great fuel for creativity after all especially in this genre oh uh, are you talking about a little bit about the covid times these days about the this situation that, we have yeah that or of course maybe that yeah of course these times but also just in general like does inspiration like these ideas come out of nowhere or do you always need to be in like the studio to 
you know? Well, um, one of the most important thing when you create music or probably art in general, like paintings or writing something, like writing books, wherever, is the, the really important thing that you need to be isolated from the, from the world, from the people. Uh, you need to be there alone so you can focus 100% on, on something you, you, you created. I mean, sometimes I work at my home when I have two daughters, I have, I have wife and two daughters, and they are here almost all the time. And I can hear them or they want something from me or whatever they not making some noises around so i was i didn't look for the place when i can be really 100 percent isolated like completely silent but i learned how to deal with that so i can focus together like with with my family on the second in the second room behind the wall uh, and right now I can focus because sometimes artists, when they create music, need to have this isolation because they don't want someone else to hear what's going on. Because the music, when you, when you create music, is very personal thing because it's, it came from the, you know, from straight from your, from your, from your heart, from your soul. So it's very personal thing. And it, you know, for the first time, I have to say it is interesting thing. It's really nice that you're asking about those those things. I, that's interesting. I never, ex, uh, you never can expect about the question from 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 someone who is asking you about about someone who is doing interview. It's really cool. So, uh, I for the first time when I I talk about the new new album right now when I was in the studio and I I performed new riffs for, and the sound engineer was there and some other people uh, like, uh, you know, the someone from the studio, some wherever. Uh, I feel something like I'm releasing my emotions in the front, on the front of the other uh, human beings and I feel a little bit of kind of shame, you know, I mean, like, I'm beat because the new songs, new album is really, uh, how to explain, really emotional, really honest, you know, it, it's really, sometimes it's really sad. Sometimes you can hear depression. Sometimes you, uh, you will hear really a lot of anger and frustration and all those all those emotions which we already have on the previous albums all the time because this is like you said in the question that music in this band is really personal it was always personal and, and honest but this time is even we push this border to to maximum to, about the being honest in the music and and you, you will hear it for sure. And it was surprising. Just, it, it just want to say that. And it was really surprising for me that when I, when I, you know, show for the show this during the recording, so the other people when they listen that, I feel like holy shit. I need, I, I feel like I talking, I talking to them with the, the old of of my uh, top secret uh, things you know, from my life which was hard, but there's no other, no other way to release the uh, really honest music. Yeah. And you know what? Because uh, what I was going to say is, is like, I think your honest music is what resonates with many people. Like, even if it, even if they aren't seeing it from the perspective of you, like, for instance, the first song I've ever listened to when the lockdowns were first imposed and you know the streets of new york city were so desolate like 
I, I live in the middle of yeah. Manhattan. You could not, you could hear, you could hear a fly flap its wings on the streets. It was that quiet. The first song yeah. that I listened yeah. to was the introduction to Moth Defect. And you just like, I feel that desolate feeling in there. Like, I feel like you, wow. what, what, what I find unique about decapitated music is, you know, with like a lot of death metal bands, it's all for many bands and there's nothing wrong with it. It's brutality, brutality, and nothing more. No questions asked relentless but i think you take all the aspects of darkness whether it's isolation or anger or sadness i feel or despair i feel like it you're able to kind of use the riffs and the solos and even the lyrics and vocals that uh that will uh really uh demonstrate all sides of darkness that a human is capable of feeling wow this is just amazing i I really feel what you say and, and thank you for that, for saying that, because in some way it is like that. I don't know, some kind of part of my personality is like that. I mean, I don't know from where it comes from, to be honest, all this despair, all this, all the things you, you've been talking about, you know, isolation and, and, and things, things like that, aggression. And I sometimes like question I myself about that, but I don't know. I don't know from where it. Maybe probably all of us, all human beings, we all have all those things inside of us, and maybe I'm I'm the one who who got the talent to discover and maybe release it from myself. And it's some kind of, you know, ritual healing for me, my personal spiritual healing to just release it and spread with, and not with, with, with some other, you know, people. And, and even it's, it's sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's brutal. Sometimes you have these weird feelings when you listen that maybe when maybe it's it just like goes to the direction when it's just can even clear your mind in some way and and maybe we can use this this kind of music for the like a kind of medicine thing you know i mean even like people ask like why people ask me and i'm sure everybody who's listened to death metal has gone through this experience why do you like this aggression why do you like this angry music i mean it the same reason what everybody has you know i feel like death metal uses pain as a paintbrush and uses darkness into the world and it can either come from an internal source or an external source but i think in the end either way it's a healthy outlet and I what, oh yeah what and like I think the reason why people resonate with decapitated and I think they're gonna really get a good feel I, what I like about the first damned is I think it's going to remind people why they like decapitated to begin with because it doesn't just demonstrate you know the aggression because I mean what gra what makes people gravitate to decapitated is the death metal riffs and the hard hitting rhythm and all that but I think it's gonna remind people like how these kids were able to not only perfect their technical excellence but perfect the art of using madness and darkness as they went along. Because some artists could succumb to that and ultimately make s songwriting relatively deteriorating. I always thought that one reason why some death metal bands break up is because they become victims of their own products in a way. And the darkness that they rely on to create uh, could sometimes like uh, destroy them. Wow. It's really deep conversation about the, about the music and I don't have much of this kind of interviews, to be honest. And 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 I feel I feel like you know, like uh, these days, I, I think it's like evolution because we it, talking we like metal community and and musicians and 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 people like you, they doing interview the journalists. We start to talk about the music in a completely different way like about how this music how we feel that music and what this music can give to us and can give to the world because it was always like talking about metal music that is brutal aggressive fast or slow or you know like really general um description 
and and I believe the metal music it's it's something more than only just you know hitting the snare as 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 fast and strong as as you can and uh, and when I when I you know when I'm talking about music like about the different genres different styles like jazz like classical music and right now metal because it's quite young genre of music how long we have metal music on the on the planet like since beethoven i would say oh uh, yes i i would say the same but like in the in the shape we can have it right now with the guitars and blast beat it's like about what 35 40 40 years yeah maybe something like that so so metal I, I, what i try to say metal music it's coming on the same level with jazz with classical music with pop everything like that which is great because people need this it's it's a music therapy and metal can be you know if you listen metal you you just feel feel great when you listen slayer for the morning coffee it makes your day perfect and uh yeah i'm glad i'm glad we we have this kind of conversation about that because the metal means not not you know metal community metal fans realize that like metal gives you really positive power and positive vibrations and stuff like that and sometimes can can save you from mistakes and sometimes it uh, really sometimes really often can brings you up from the depression so it's an important part of the music worldwide scene yeah and and that's really cool that we have um we, we start to talk in this way we we do analyzation like real professional uh analyzation of the music of the metal music yeah talking about emotions absolutely and there was one like technical question i wanted this is the final question i actually have to ask you it's probably the least uh, deep question uh, uh, uh but i did want to ask about your technical playing as well because you know in the end while it's great to channel your emotion behind it you also you know there is also technical stuff that you have to incorporate in it so like with your soloing and your riffing styles like do you have a theoretical element that you follow or sort of like a usual technical practice that influences you or are you completely self-taught and just let your emotions guide you through the playing as well well to be honest it was everything was way easier when uh, i was younger when i was about you know 20 25 years old beginnings it was really in some way it's it's like a sport uh if you wanna if you wanna play really fast and have a fast picking on the right hand and and you're gonna you know uh <laughs> do all this crazy riffing in the right in the left hand uh it was easier when i was 17 18 19 when i started creating this crazy crazy riffs and uh, i remember I was uh, I have this mind in my head on the beginnings of this band that I want to try to be I want to try to show the world like how good I am how fast I can play how I I was I was just I love to play technical stuff and it was really natural for me I, I wasn't I and and I didn't I didn't uh, uh, use any particular uh, specific specific uh, uh, practicing or techniques or scales were or something like that my my way to become the guitar player as I am right now it was just put tape or CD in my player play guitar and try to do the same with my favorite band like Sepultura Metallica Morbid Angel vader cannibal corpse the side and all my favorite bands i was just listen that and try to learn it wasn't it wasn't any uh 
it was a f maybe few like uh, videos like guitar how to play guitar how to practice guitar so i have like maybe two uh uh vhs tapes uh so i pick some skills from the different guitar players but uh well it's just it just keeping practicing it keep practicing keep practicing all the time as small as you can on the beginning and that's spending hours with the instrument create me as as what i represent right now and what i was actually represent uh, 25 years ago because my style change a little bit but i'm still the same guy i'm, a, I'm still the same guitar player when I, I was in 25 years ago to be honest yeah sometimes i i'm like holy shit i still i still playing the same things you know all the time but i'm not boring about that i'm still loving i i adding more and more elements to my my style to my playing and i'm more in my opinion i'm more mature player and I know more about the sound, about how to create and how to record a better sound. But still, I'm when I risk when when I listen these days those two demo tapes. When I was 15, I was like, I'm like, holy shit, man! Some things I can do these days, like in the past well i could still tell it's your guitar playing even like from your like obviously from the album that you've done with a uh, vader but even where you play when you played with a uh, blind dead and acid drinkers and uh, new breed and ketha like i'm like yeah you have your own thing you know I i've always said that the two guitar players in death metal that kind of because you know when it comes to like death metal i feel like that there is sort of like a universal riffing style like you know that that you play but there are a few small handful of guitar players that have their own riffing style i think dino from fear factory is a good example of that chuck schuldner of course you can't forget him yeah uh, i think the guys in arch spire like the newest edition kind of have that but i also think you sort of have that with your own style and i'd imagine that playing you know doing guest appearances with thy disease or blind dead or acid drinkers or something like that that almost has to um uh maybe uh in open up new ideas to how you play right and bring in some new stuff to decapitate it right oh you talk about this kind of oh yeah uh, every time when you when you're joining the other project, it's big lessons and can be very inspired. Yes, and 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 uh, this inspiration also inspired some kind of evolution in me. So from time to time, I I really like to join the other project or do just like a guest solo stuff like that. Just challenge myself to different style and different band and it always always makes me a new person new musician and different player and stuff like that so yeah it, it's really worth it to do the other things to different projects and then challenge yourselves all the time and to create something uh, new right now i i'm just finished uh i want to say that i just finished uh a few uh solo parts for a new ep of machine head and and it's gonna be released on probably 11 uh june 11 if i'm right um uh, but it will be three new songs and i have to say it will be really heavy and then, and then the rap, in, including even the blast beats on in the in the songs and stuff like that, is fast and, and yeah, it would be different. Also, like a back to the groovy trash metal heavy riffs, and I did uh, two solos, and and that was also challenging. It's it, it's it's gonna be cool stuff. So yeah, 
the challenge is always great, especially in this genre, and uh, I look forward to hearing everything. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time and for such a great conversation. Um, is there just anything else that you would like to promote with the release of the first Damned or anything else you would like to plug for Decapitated? Uh, so um, I would like to thank you for our interview. It was great. It's uh, I have a feeling I need to uh, take a few uh, lessons of uh, English language because <laughs> it looks like I would like to you know explain my feelings about my music my everything mm -hmm. uh, my my compositions and you were fine all the you emotions I put into the music about like in the in the in the nicest way so everyone can understand 100% what I trying to <laughs> what I trying to deliver in my answers but anyways um, I hope you enjoyed this interview and I hope you will check our new release first dam because it's a huge history in there and uh, if you don't know our band from the beginning that's the it will be the best occasion for you guys to check our first demo tapes without any mixing any mastering raw sounding stuff from 90s first step of decapitated check it out if you have time if you don't have time don't have to check it out <laughs> anyways thanks for interview thank you so um, much everybody i hope to see you guys and I, I the most important thing i hope to see you guys soon in the west uh how the shows will come back and how the situation will change for better really soon yeah. so we can finally enjoy music life which is the best things on this planet ever absolutely we look forward to that day it'll be worth the wait but thank you so much everybody decapitated the first damned coming out very soon be sure to check that out this is alex from heavy new york we will see you next time